poison pill strategy back in the day uh, when spies were about to get caught or about to get captured and they would just consume a pill which is filled with poison and uh, that would detract the capturer or the one who is trying to control. Similarly, in the business, this poison pill strategy is also used to avoid or to dissuade, to discourage potential buyer or a hostile takeover. This is not a very new one. This is being used since 80s and one of the uh, recent examples that I can give is Netflix. So what exactly is this poison pill strategy as far as business is concerned? When somebody is trying to take over the company and company understands somebody is trying to take over against the company's will and wish. So as soon as somebody is reaching up to 15% of shareholding capacity, automatically this shareholders rights plan or the poison pill strategy comes into effect. So the moment somebody is reaching up to 15%, this plan is implemented with which the capacity to expand the number of shares become much higher. I'll try to tell you a rough example of this. If there are 100 shares of a company at the rate of $1 and when the poison pill strategy is implemented, assume that this 100 shares became 200 shares, but because it gave an opportunity to buy additional share at half the price of the current share value, that means this 200 shares will become a valuation of $150 and each share has become 75 cents. That means even the shareholders, despite that they are able to increase the number of the shares, their overall value is coming down per share value because it was $1 before, now it has become 75 cents. That means this poison pill strategy is having an impact on everybody across the board. The impact for the existing shareholder became, let's say 15 to 20% and the potential buyer, the impact has become straight away 50%. Now, what are the positive sides of this poison pill strategy? Poison pill strategy cannot completely stop the hostile takeover if one intends to. However, this would buy a lot more time for the existing company to dissuade or discourage the potential buyer. This is one. But second thing is because this is open for a negotiation, it can also increase the chances of increasing the overall valuation. There is another reason that uh, board doesn't want some potential buyer to come on board as an owner is because the value system may not align. For example, the philosophy of the company, values of the company, value system of the company may not align with the new buyer. Hence, the board of the existing company would like to discourage the potential buyer. And also this gives the existing company the power of better negotiation as far as the valuation is concerned. Let's come back to what is happening now. This is Mr. Elon Musk, the maverick business leader versus the Twitter board. And the richest man on the earth and also a maverick business leader who wants to take over Twitter. Right now he is the single largest individual shareholder in Twitter with 9.2% of the stake. Now he wanted to buy the Twitter 100%. Current share price of the Twitter is about 45.08 and his tender is about $54 per share. On the paper, it looks absolutely fine because he's offering almost $10 in excess to the current share price. But the Twitter board has other plans. There could be a misalignment of the value system between Elon Musk and the Twitter board or the group of the shareholders. Or Twitter board might want Elon Musk to increase the offer. These two could be the main reasons. However, this is not going to be so easy even for the Twitter board. The individual stakeholders also going to have the knock-on effect with this poison pill. And hence, not everybody may like the idea of poison pill. Even though this poison pill strategy, time in memorial has been very effective in safeguarding the company's interests, but then it is always not a hunky-dory travel because the individual shareholder might not be very happy with the eroding price of the share and hence they may resort to lawsuits against the company. Elon Musk in the latest uh, tech conclave he has clearly mentioned that his offer is final and also he has a plan B. I don't think uh, Elon Musk's plan B is to float another company and uh, do all that legwork and create another giant like Twitter because 
Elon, under the current circumstances, I don't feel that he has enough time bandwidth for him to focus on new companies. I'm sure his plan B could be a hostile takeover because he can continue to push his ambition and uh, he may try to gather more individual shareholders and uh, have a pool of more than 50%. Eventually, he will have the control of uh, the Twitter board. We have to wait and see if Twitter board would like Elon Musk to make a revised offer.